What's up guys, my name is DJ Swivel and on this episode of Just The Tips, we are dealing with part two of the Q&A from a few weeks ago. Um, you guys asked a ton of amazing questions. Uh, some are business related, uh, some are technical, you know, more music related questions. Uh, but before we dig into the Q&A, make sure you like, subscribe, do everything you gotta do, hit the notification bell, and let's go. All right, this question is from uh, underscore Sammy Dahami underscore. Um, <laughs> and uh, Sammy asks, are there any key components that you actually look for in a song? Um, I, I'm thinking what he means is what are the key components that you look for in a great song? I think that's what he means. And uh, yeah, there's a few things that I think um, all good songs sort of have. Uh, the first and maybe most important thing is a hook. And that doesn't necessarily mean the chorus. What is the hook? What is the catchiest, uh, earwormiest part of the song? What is the thing that people are going to remember most about the song? And this can totally change. Um, it could be drums. So in the case of, you know, one song that I loved when I was in high school was um, Grindin' by The Clips. And that entire song is about the drums and it's about the da, 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 like that trash can sounding thing that Pharrell did. Um, that to me is the hook of that song, right? Um, every song has its own hook. And so it's a matter of finding what is that repetitive, catchy element that is going to get stuck in your head. So every really good song I think needs that. Um, what else? Uh, you know, concise lyrics, conversational lyrics. Um, you want to be able to understand and connect to what the artist is saying. I think that's really important. Um, you know, other, you know, of course, good melody. And then, uh, thirdly, great execution, right? Is it recorded well? Is it mixed well? Are all of the elements, you know, sitting in their own space? Can you hear everything? Does it all come together well? You can have a great song, but if it's executed poorly, like the production isn't very great, even if there's a catchy element, that song's not going to connect. So it really is about, you know, great songwriting, great production, and then um, executing it well, uh, I think is really important. And then having those catchy elements in there uh, is key. So great question. Thank you for that. Okay, so Andy MTP asks, uh, what is the difference in workflow between Western artists versus Korean groups? Um, so as many of you know, uh, I started my career working with Western artists like, you know, Beyonce and the Chainsmokers. Uh, and recently I've done a lot of work with uh, Korean acts like BTS and, and Twice. Um, and there is a few differences uh, from my perspective. Uh, when you're working with Western artists, first of all, they're usually in the room with you or, you know, you might write with songwriters and then pitch a song. Uh, and you're typically writing for solo artists or maybe it's a small group. Um, but you're sort of writing from one voice most of the time. Uh, when working on K-pop music, uh, the groups in Korean uh, music are much bigger. You know, BTS has seven members. Uh, and each of those members has their own unique voice and their own unique way of doing things. And so I actually find working with Korean groups very freeing because you don't have to, uh, cut ideas. If I have three different, really great verse ideas, I can actually cut a demo with all three of those ideas in there. And then when it gets sent back to the label, um, they're going to be able to figure out well, one, which are the best ideas and, and get rid of the ones that they don't like. But then also, uh, maybe this idea works really well for one of the vocalists, but this one works really well for another vocalist. So you actually have a lot more freedom when writing for Korean acts because I sort of just like put everything down on the record, all of the ideas. And because I'm not, I'm not writing the lyrics in Korean, I'm, I'm doing English lyrics and melody. Um, you know, getting those melodies out, the band will determine which melodies they love and pick the ones that they love, and then they'll rewrite to it anyway. So, um, slightly different process. Uh, and again, Western artists, I'm delivering a complete song, uh, lyric, melody, production, everything. And with Korean acts, um, the focus is largely 
Um, you know, there are some English lyrics that they will use, but it's largely about, you know, production and melody. So that's, that's the key difference between uh, Western artists versus Korean. And thank you for the question. Okay. Matthew D asks, um, when audio engineers use the slang term air, uh, what does that mean? Uh, this is a really simple question. Air is just, uh, brightness, the upper frequencies. In my view, I look at air as sort of like 10 or 12 K and above. It's that the brightest, uh, frequencies, uh, in the frequency spectrum. So kind of like 10 to 20 K sort of, um, and most people can't even hear, uh, 20 K. So yeah, kind of everything above 10, 12 K, uh, that's air. All right. This next question is from, uh, Angeli. I think I'm, I might be butchering your name. Uh, it's angel with an E on the end of it, uh, from North Carolina. And, um, the question is, how did you get into the K-pop side of the industry? That's actually a really uh, simple one. Uh, I was working with the Chainsmokers and they collaborated on a song with BTS and I mixed that song. And through mixing that song, I built a relationship with the team at Big Hit and I started sending them some of my own records, uh, which happened to resonate with the band. And, and that's sort of how we began to work. Okay, this next question is from K-Forge who asks, uh, do you think TikTok is the new... Uh, or best way to promote music? Um, I think so, absolutely. Right now, uh, TikTok is by far the most important social media platform uh, to break new music. Um, we've seen it time and time again. Uh, you look at Old Town Road, uh, the biggest song from a chart perspective in music history, I think it was, what, 19 or 20 weeks at number one, um, you know, unheard of. It didn't just break the record, it eclipsed the record. Uh, and more recently we've seen even, you know, that's an example of breaking a new artist, but even older groups, uh, just recently Fleetwood Mac, uh, their song dreams, uh, one TikToker uh, posted a video of him on a skateboard, uh, drinking some cranberry juice and, uh, uh, and playing that song and just, it was very, it was an endearing video. It just like looked like very freeing and, and that sort of resonated with people. And, and that has shot a song from, I think what the seventies or maybe early eighties uh, up the charts in 2020. So I think that's amazing. It's a really powerful tool. And I think all creators uh, should be looking for ways to take advantage of TikTok uh, and use it to help promote their music. So absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Ernesto FIFA asks, uh, what's your most enjoyable side of making music? Is it mix engineering, producing, songwriting? Um, that's a great question. Uh, for me, I get bored very easily. So I like juggling a lot of hats. Um, and it took time to get to this point. Obviously, I was always producing, but when I was engineering, I was really learning the craft and focusing more on being a great recording engineer, a little less so on the mixing. And then once I got really good at recording, um, and it became sort of second nature. Then I really started focusing on the mixing and, and building up my skills in that craft. Uh, and I've always been, been focused on producing and it really just depends on my mood. Some days I wake up, I have a great idea that I want to produce out and I'll sit and I'll make a beat and I'll produce it out. Other times, uh, I'm working on a mix or working with a client to help sort of, uh, direct their sound. And maybe there's some additional production that happens during that process. Um, what I've found is that all of those things actually really do coexist. And uh, a lot of times you're using skills from all three in the same session. So um, yeah, for me, it, it just changes every day. Whatever I creatively feel like uh, in that moment is what I sort of tend to spend my time on. All right, Chris Ovid asks, uh, how do you start making income with music? Um, that's a good question and kind of a tough one to answer. Uh, the best way I can answer that is just start taking your shots, make your music, get it to a point where you feel good about it and you're, and you're willing to share it with the world and then just start putting music out. Just start putting it out. Uh, I presume that means you're a producer or an artist. Uh, if you are trying to make it as an engineer, go take an internship, meet people in the space, go work at a studio, figure out how the process works, you know, meet artists, build your client base. A lot of it, it's hard work. You know, it doesn't, this doesn't fall into people's laps very often. 
Uh, it takes a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of practice, and just persistence. The moment you quit is the moment you stop making money. So you have to keep going even when you hear no, even when you get discouraged. You just have to keep pushing through. And eventually, if you are persistent, you will figure it out and you will start making money from music. So just keep at it, keep taking shots. All right, the next question is from uh, Johannes from Portugal. And he asks, uh, what is the best habit you have adopted through the years? Uh, for me, without a doubt, it's work ethic. Um, I am not the most talented uh, producer or mixer or songwriter. Um, you know, I've practiced really, really hard and gotten fairly good at these things. But I have a ton of friends around me, some peers, who are just infinitely better at songwriting than I am or at producing than I am. And, and um, so much more natural ability. And, uh, but the one thing that I have that, um, I can say with confidence, I have more so than any of the peers that I are, you know, frequently around me is just an insane, relentless work ethic. I never stop. I will work 24 hours a day. Um, I will skip meals. I will skip sleep. There is nothing in this world that will prevent me from accomplishing the goals that I've set out for myself. And that to me, I will take work ethic over talent any day of the week. If you're willing to give up everything for success or to meet a goal, even if you don't have that talent, you will work so hard that you will acquire the talent. And so I will take work ethic over talent or anything else any day of the week. And for me, that's, that's the skill that I feel like I have that has allowed me to uh, find success in music, so.